You've all been asking for it, so you got it. The GameSir G7 full review coming up right now. And let me know what controller you want to see reviewed next on the channel. If I haven't done it, let me know in the comments below. So let's start with what's in the box. Well, the controller, of course, and then you have your nine line cable, which is a probably nine to 10 feet. I'll post it right here on screen, you'll see it. Also, you get an extra face plate, and well, it comes with joysticks that can be taken off and replaced. Also, it comes in a box, you get a 30 day free trial to Xbox Game Pass. I'm gonna make sure I post that on my community tab if I haven't already for you guys to be able to enjoy just a little bit of a way for me to give back to you guys for free. Let's start with the front of the controller itself, the XYB A button. I, be honest with you, I thought they were lying. I, I saw tactile and I was like, there's no way this controller costs $40 and it has tactile buttons on it. I, boy, was I wrong. This controller has freaking tactile buttons on the front of it for 40 freaking dollars. And not only that, they feel really, really good. Like I'm saying like razor quality good. Like I literally pulled my razor controller out to fill it. The razor may be slightly more pressure to push behind it, but they sound just as tactile as the buttons themselves on the Razer controller. And it says it's rated for 5 million clicks. So these buttons are just perfect. Like they're, they're great. So yeah, moving on. Other front actuation buttons on the button uh, controller, the share button, the uh, Xbox button and all that. They're there, they work. There's nothing special about them. Since we're talking about front actuation buttons and stuff, we're talking about the front of the controller, we need to talk about the D-pad. D-pad has a clickiness to it. Um, it's not bad, it's not good. Um, it sounds, I mean, I like the clickiness to it. The roll-offs are pretty good, it feels like, on the D-pad for fighting games. They might not be the best on the market, but they're better than an Xbox standard controller, in my personal opinion, but they're not as good as like an 8-bit do. But the, also with the D-pad, you can control your in-game volume and your chat volume by pressing the M button on the bottom of the controller, the front of it, and then controlling your volume like that. So that's something uh, you can do with this controller that you, you know, most controllers do that nowadays, but you know, I gotta throw it in here because someone will ask me in the comments if I don't. And since we're talking about the D-pad and the volume control and stuff, yes, this is controlled with the 3.5 millimeter jack that's on the bottom of the controller for wired headsets only, not wireless headsets. When it comes to the joysticks of this controller, they feel pretty good. They are have the anti-friction ring around them, so they glide around smoothly like butter. Now, they are fatter. They're actually identical to the PS4 joysticks for the most part of how big they are and stuff, which means yeah, Xbox control freaks will not fit on this controller. You'll actually be better off going with the PS4 or the Nintendo Switch control freaks. Now, if you have a Fusion Pro or another controller that you can take the joystick off of, like this controller, I recommend trying it out, especially if you already have Xbox control freaks sitting around the house because I was able to take the Fusion Pro 2 or Fusion Pro 3 joystick off and literally put it on this controller and then put my control freak on here for the Xbox. So I didn't have to go out and buy another control freak to have to do that. But in any case, if you don't have that and you want control freaks for that, I'm gonna post what will fit in the description below as well as this controller itself. So go down there and check that out. Hey, just real quick, forgot to mention, you can do a joystick and trigger calibration on here. I didn't do it because I didn't need to. There's no issues with them, so why would I mess with it? You messing with stuff like that could cause issues when you don't have none. But yeah, it's in the instructions if you do have some kind of issue out of the box. The bumpers on this controller, they feel pretty good. They're not like cheaply filling at all, and they have a grip on them. Now, the grip is kind of like underneath it a little bit. It's not all the way across, so I really wish they would have kind of went with that stipple gripping all the way around it just to kind of you know, add to it. I'm not mad at them for not doing it, but I am kind of like disappointed that it wasn't all the way across. As well as the joysticks out of the box, they do feel good. They have a really, really, really smooth pulling action on them. They just, they feel pretty good. They do have the stipple gripping on them as well, but again, it doesn't go all the way around. It's right there on the, uh, the very front of it and it doesn't wrap around. I kind of wish it would have just kept that groove going, just wrapping it all the way around, just, 
not only cosmetically, but also just user-wise. It just makes more sense in my personal opinion to have that all the way around the joysticks themselves. If you're getting value out of the video, make sure you hit the like button. It takes you one second, it's free to do, and it helps me out. Moving on. Back buttons on this controller, there's two of them. They're placed perfectly on the controller. They're not lifted too high or lowered too much into the controller. They wrap around the back of it perfectly. Ergonomically speaking, they're just perfect. They do have a little bit of a clickiness, as you can hear right here. Not too much, not too little. It's not super, super clickly like the tactile buttons but they are there and you know you're clicking and when you do click them. To program this controller and these buttons on here, there's two ways to do it. The first one is gonna be to hold the M button at the bottom of the controller. The light will start rapidly blinking. You will hit the back button and the front button that you want to correlate with that back button or you can use the app that we'll get to here in a few minutes. And if you want to unsync the buttons on this controller, you will just do the same thing, but instead of hitting the front actuating button, you will actually just hit the back button twice and that will cancel out any buttons that were programmed to it. So we was talking about ergonomics with the back buttons and everything. I will go ahead and get into the ergonomic part of this controller. This controller feels pretty good in the hands, ergonomically speaking. It's a hybrid, in my personal opinion, between the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One controller. It has a little bit more of the Switch mode right here, but the Xbox controller going around the outside of it. It feels great in hands. There's no issues there. Let's move on. Let's talk about the power port on this controller real quick. It does cradle the power uh, cord on it, you know, where it doesn't move around a whole lot, protecting that port on the inside. What I don't like about this is that the cord itself is really, really small. I have a slew, like bunch of USB-C type cables and not one of the ones I have will actually fit in here. You have to use GameSer's USB type cable. So, you know, where the cable seems like it's built pretty well and it's not gonna have an issue with it. If there is an issue with it, you kind of screwed because you gotta use their cable. So you're either gonna have to buy another controller or go online and buy a, you know, find a cable that will fit this thing. Speaking of all that and if having issues and stuff, this thing does come with a one year standard warranty. Now let's talk about the app real quick here. There's a slew of things you can do. You have four different profiles to pick from. You have a default profile and you have three other profiles you can set up to where you can set the back buttons up. You can set the dead zones for your triggers, or excuse me, your triggers and your joystick sticks up where you can um, you know set it up to where you want it at to be perfect for like FPS shooting games and stuff like that as well as you could turn hair triggers on this controller as well so even though like I talked about earlier it doesn't have trigger stops on this controller you do have an option to put hair triggers on this controller where it means you shouldn't have to go all the way down to actuate the button you can just kind of tap it to get that rapid fire and stuff like that in the FPS game so that's a nice touch. Still want some trigger stops to make it a little bit easier when we do do put turn hair triggers on, but in any case, they're there. The pulling rate out of the box is a 250 hertz, four millisecond true pulling rate, and it does not overclock. Don't even try to overclock it. If you set it up to a thousand, it's gonna have issues. It's gonna bug out and stuff. So don't even try it. Moving on. So for $40, I am gonna be 100% with you guys. I just did a uh, HyperX controller review where I was like 35 bucks. It's probably the best and one of the best uh, budget pro controllers you can buy. No, not by any shot. This, in my personal opinion, is the best budget pro controller you can buy. Yes, it's missing trigger stops. I do agree. I wish it had it on there, but the slew of other features this controller comes with, the way it feels, it has the triggers feel, how it has the software on it, and it has tactile freaking buttons. Like what controller under $60 have you ever saw with tactile buttons on it. I haven't seen one. If you have, comment below because if you think there's a controller better than this for $40 out there, I wanna know about it because I wanna review it next. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and love.